edition, News at 10 with Ann Gownley. Sports with Beth Mensinger. Meteorologist Joe Garbacek. And senior news analyst, L.A. Tyrone. Same idea, different location for a controversial treatment facility, and it's our top story tonight. Good evening, this is WYLN's Late Edition for Wednesday, December 19th, 2013. I'm Ann Gownley. Developers have abandoned plans for opening an alcohol and drug rehabilitation center on St. John's Road in Butler Township. Developers Dr. Jude Sideri and John Darrow announced they're exploring alternate sites for the center. The development came just two days after a 400 people at a township zoning hearing about the proposed facility. Facility. Most of them opposed to it. The zoning board took no action on the case and continued hearing to look for a larger venue. The developers made clear that while they're no longer looking to open it at St. John's Road site, they will continue looking for a suitable location. They stopped short of ruling out an alternative site in the township. A budget has been passed for Hazleton, but according to those council members that will be there next year, it will be amended. By a vote of 3-2, the City of Hazleton passed its 2014 budget this evening. Council members Gene Mope and Jack Mundy voted no. I don't know of any community in, in, in this area, I mean, maybe the whole entire northeastern Pennsylvania, that is lowering taxes. Even Weatherly raised their taxes the first time in eight years. So Hazleton is lowering them, uh, lowering the debt service. Why can't we give that back to the citizens? And I think that's, that's what I'm looking at. And we're saving money in the process. So it's a win-win it's a situation. So it's a matter of when you pay the debt, you pay the debt whenever you can pay the debt. If that happens in August and September, then you pay the debt in August and September. With this being an election year, council will have until February 15th to amend the budget after the new council is sworn in on January 6th. Councilman Jack Mundy says they will be looking at amending this budget. The budget, we have, we have until February 15th to amend it and make some changes, which we are. You know, I, I would propose and like to have a, hi a hiring freeze on the city. We don't want to hire anyone because of the financial shape the city's in. And, I, you know, I have to talk to my other council members, but we don't want to hire, you know, people unless we really have to. At the previous meeting, Council President Jim Perry made a motion to amend the budget by transferring the commercial sewer transmission fee fund balance to sewer bonds, something Jack Mundy says seriously needs to be looked at. What they did was, at the one hand, charge people more on a stormwater fee, and then at the other end, gave them a, a tax break for a year anyway, and created a mess for the city. And, and Steve Hahn admitted that, that it could, be, it could be a problem, it could lead to layoffs, and it sort of ties the city's hands from what they, what they did. But I'm of the opinion, I've talked to some other people, some legal people, you need four votes to amend the budget. You need a super majority. So they, when, even when they were amending the budget, they couldn't amend it. So whether it's legal or not, we'll find out. I think Steve was trying to find a way to save money and not have to borrow the money. Uh, so I, I didn't get the impression that he said it was wrong. I mean, everybody else approves of that. We approved it. I mean, he's trying to find a way not to borrow money from a bank or get a tan. So he wants to take the money, use it for now. Re replenish that money with the, with the stormwater fee and then they can be used to draw down on the taxes. Uh, I don't see why it can't be done. Uh, if they want to amend it and change it, they certainly can. But here's an opportunity for us to save the citizens some money uh, and not, not borrow any, not use any, uh, not pay any fees to borrow money. So you can use the money and put it back and then use it again. Again, council has until February 15th to amend the 2014 budget. With this being the last Hazleton City Council meeting of the year, two members said their goodbyes after losing the November election. Come January, Dr. David Sosar and Jeff Cassatt will be sworn in. Council President Jim Perry and Kevin Chatter thanked the residents. To, uh, the whole team. Uh, you know, people's jobs, you know, throughout the, the rest of the year. And, um, you know, I, I wish we would have had an opportunity to discuss more of the budget. And, uh, you know, having another meeting, I thought that could have, could have been helpful, but, um, you know, their answers to, their answers to the budget coming up in the, in the upcoming year, so I guess we're just going to have to wait for them. I will still be involved in the community, and I thank everybody for that. I will, uh, a lot of great people, I want to thank the administration and all the workers. Uh, it's been a great experience, and I, uh, I won't go away. Thank you, everybody, and I wish everybody a great holiday uh, season, and uh, 
We'll see you on the sixth, perhaps, the last time. Thank you very much. Motion to adjourn. The new council will be sworn in on Monday, January 6th at 10 a.m. Major parts of Act 13 were struck down today. That's the gas drilling law. The Supreme Court struck down the clauses which take authority away from local zoning hearing boards and give it to the state. Act 13 declared that municipalities must allow gas drilling in all zoning designations, including residential, as long as certain buffers were adhered to. The Supreme Court struck that portion of the law down by a 4-2 vote this afternoon. That means that local zoning hearing boards can restrict drilling in any way they see fit. Fire destroyed a local restaurant and drums, and now the owners are picking up the pieces. It was back in 2009 when the Bell House Cafe at 656 North Hunter Highway and Drums held its grand opening. Owner Thomas Bell stands outside his business five years later, just hours after flames gutted his business, reflecting on the memories. Firefighters from all over Luzerne County were called in to the third alarm fire around 530 yesterday evening. When the first units arrived on scene, the building was completely engulfed in flames. Tanker trucks were stationed at the Candu Corporate Center, just a mile south of the fire scene. Parts of Route 309 were shut down due to the freezing temperatures and the amount of water on the roadway. It was at least an hour until crews were able to get the fire under control and extinguished. Butler Township remained on scene for several hours. As Bell revisits the site of the cafe today, he says there has been an outpouring of support from the community. I have great customers. I, uh, last night and today alone, uh, I've gotten so many well wishes and uh, I really don't know what to say about it. I feel pretty much devastated. I would just like to thank all of the customers that have called and wished me well. Thank you. For five years, the Bell House Cafe has been serving customers breakfast and lunch. When we first started, we were 100% green. We had one bag of garbage, but we used uh, corn plates and forks, and uh, it uh, made you feel like you were at a picnic. And uh, now we went to flatware and, and uh, bigger tables, nicer tables. We just put in $12,000 worth the new furniture in there, and uh, as you saw, it's trashed. A state police fire marshal was on scene and is still investigating how the fire began. Bell told us today that he does plan on rebuilding the Bell House Cafe, the business that he loved so much. People don't understand, but they said how much it mattered to them. But they really mattered to me. Um, coming in every day, seeing uh, my regulars in the morning, it's family. It's a great place, so I, I have to rebuild it. According to Bell, no one was hurt in the fire, and all of his animals got out safely. Well, emergency crews considered a search of the Susquehanna River, but they decided not to. A passerby spotted a snowboard floating on top of the ice off the Market Street Bridge this morning, but crews determined it was too dangerous to send divers into the icy Susquehanna. Investigators surveyed the area and did not believe that anyone was actually under the ice. No one was reported missing. Hazelton police are reporting a hit and run earlier today involving an ambulance. An APTS vehicle with its emergency lights and sirens on was headed west on Diamond Avenue near the 600 block when a large silver truck or SUV, which could have been a Ford Expedition, crossed the yellow lines and collided with the emergency vehicle. The truck left the scene going eastbound on Diamond Avenue. There is minor damage to the ambulance and the driver refused medical treatment. The vehicle that fled will have damage to the driver's side, side view mirror, and anyone with information is asked to call Hazleton Police at 570-459-4940 or dial 911. King's College introduced its new component this afternoon. L.A. Tyrone has the details. The Ramada Inn has been in downtown Wilkes-Barre for something like 35 years. About two months ago, it was announced that King's College had bought it. Today, it showed what it planned to do with it. The press conference featured a King's alumnus and many others. Kyle Kinsman is the chief architect. 
the repurposing of the Ramada Hotel into the, uh, a multi-use facility for King's College accommodates principally on the first floor of the Physician Assistant Program, which is a health science program, a uh, new health science program for college with uh, high-tech spaces, on the, including laboratories and, uh, most importantly, the Gross Anatomy Laboratory. Uh, we also have exercise science and uh, athletic training education, so three health science-related programs on the first and second floor of the existing building. He says the top two floors will be student housing, except for the top two floors. They will sit idle until Kings figures out its next move. President Father Jack Ryan says the space was needed. We have a very ambitious strategic plan, a new strategic plan going from 2013 uh, to 2018. And part of that plan is to grow. Uh, we have three very exciting programs, high demand programs, a physician assistant program that's uh, in high demand, uh, really great paying career as well as providing uh, great service to the community, but also an athletic training program. And we're excited to introduce a brand new program in exercise science. Uh, the, the labor outlook for that uh, particular field is very, very strong. And he says there was another reason King's hopes to attract foreign students. In addition to added space, for the first time we're looking at international markets. Next spring, I'll be traveling to Turkey to meet with uh, eight presidents of universities there. We already have one articulation agreement with Zerve University in Turkey. And so there is a possibility, uh, and we hope, that uh, international students will be coming here to Wilkes-Barre as well. So this would house, and as it is, uh, Wilkes had housed international students and may still house international students. So this will be a place of, uh, of expansion. Kinsman says the facility will be state-of-the-art. By the way, he has had previous experience. Well, we, we did O'Hara Hall at King's College a few years ago, which is also a multi-use building with uh, residence, hall, residence life and also an academic department. And uh, we recently did a similar building uh, like that out at uh, Misericordia University, uh, McDowell Hall. And we recently did the renovation of the YMCA in downtown Wilkes-Barre also. Now in his address, Layton noted how good it will be for the city and students. The downside for the city is there is only one downtown hotel left. 35 years ago, there were three. L.A. Tyrone, WYLN's Late Edition. Tampa Bay Rays skipper Joe Madden is back in town kicking off the Hazleton part of his yearly 10-day Thanksgiving tour. It started earlier this week in the Tampa area when he and other coaches and players from the Rays went out and helped to serve food to those who are less fortunate for five days straight. Here in Hazleton, things kicked off a little differently with a press conference today at the Hazleton One Community Center. It's the home of Madden's Hazleton Integration Project and since opening its doors earlier in the summer for different things like exercise and language classes to athletic leagues. Hundreds of residents from around the city, both participants and volunteers, are calling it their second home. Those of you that volunteer here, that truly is, for me, the definition of being a hero. Those people truly do deserve our utmost gratitude because without you, something like this cannot work. It won't work. It's impossible to work. So for me and Jake, to all of you that are volunteering, sincerely thank you very much because this does not work without any of you. Area officials were on hand, including Hazleton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi, State Senator Johnny Dechak, and State Representative Tara Tuhill. Always, now you know it, that when Joe Madden says he's going to do something, he does it. The doors were first open, and we weren't sure who was going to walk through that door or how many were going to walk through that door. And now we are serving over 1,500 people a week, whether they're in language classes, computer classes, other educational learning programs, or whether it's kids just having fun and being kids on this basketball floor. You have now not only made one community with the Hazleton One Community Center, you really are the number one community center in northeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, but I want to thank you uh, for not forgetting home. I know Hazleton is your, your hometown, and he's our hometown legend. Uh, so we're glad to have you here. We look up to you so much in this community. I know the children here look up to you. The adults do, too, but the children as well. Uh, and we're very, very proud. Thanks, Miss continues tomorrow night at Janetti's with Madden Celebrity Dinner and Auction. Saturday is the Madden Family Christmas and Talent Show at the Wiltsy Center. And then Sunday, Thanks, Miss Dinner will be served by Madden and his friends. Now, Beth Mensinger will have more coming up with Madden coming up in sports. 
Wilkes-Barre is expected to make a payment of $150,000 to keep the Hawkeye security cameras running for another year. The board of the nonprofit corporation overseeing Hawkeye approved the extension Wednesday. Wilkes-Barre City Council is looking to approve the payment at Thursday's work session and meeting. A former Wilkes-Barre man who is in state prison was arraigned today on reports he allegedly burglarized the home of a Wilkes-Barre cop three years ago. 23-year-old Jerome Shar is already serving 9 to 18 years in the state prison at Cole Township for several other home burglaries, but was arraigned via video by District Judge Joseph Halsey today for the November 17, 2010 incident when he broke into the basement of Officer Brett Smith's home and stole video games, a video game system, and a laptop. When questioned in 2012, Shar denied any involvement, but in July of 2013, he admitted to the crime. Shar is charged with burglary, criminal trespass, theft and criminal mischief. He waived his right to a preliminary hearing and is headed to trial at the Luzerne County Courthouse. The Banks Township Supervisors are holding their meeting tomorrow at the Harrisburg Hilton Hotel. They are expected to approve the 2014 budget, but it may be deemed illegal. A second class township is required to propose an annual budget and pass a final version no later than December 31st. It must be adv advertised and made available for public inspection at least 20 days before the final passage. According to an attorney for the Pennsylvania News Media Association, they may not be able to comply with the 20-day inspection before the deadline. The meeting is said to have been moved to Harrisburg due to security reasons. It will cost the township around $424 for the relocation. Five, county, five Luzerne County Transit Authority employees appeared before a grand jury in Harrisburg Wednesday. The employees were subpoenaed by an Attorney General Kathleen Kane. PennDOT has had an ongoing investigation into the charge that the LCTA intentionally increased its ridership numbers to receive additional state funding, ghost riders. There was a significant drop in recorded senior riders from June 2012 to April 2013. Drivers manually recorded them. The authority installed automatic counters in the spring. LCTA board member Pat Conway also received a subpoena to testify on Wednesday, but the Attorney General's office pushed it back to a later date. Budget Secretary Charles Zogby warned that Pennsylvania faces fiscal challenges next year. There are several factors contributing to the problem, including a $500 million spike in state payments to cover school district employee pensions, a $110 million for state government employee pension, and $600 million increase for medical assistance. Currently, the state has $1.7 billion in additional cost and not enough tax revenue to cover it. Pennsylvania will get some new revenue from legalizing several small games of chance. Governor Tom Corbett is expected to give his fourth budget address early in February. Target shoppers who swipe their cards to make purchases between November 27th and December 15th may have had their accounts exposed. 40 million customers could be affected. The stolen information includes names, card numbers, expiration dates, and security codes. The stolen information comes from Target cards as well as Visa and MasterCard. Online purchases were not affected. Customers are urged to check their statements and report any suspicious charges to their credit card companies. They can also get in contact with Target at 1-866-852-8680. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. Time now to check in with Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacic in the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center. Joe? Well, thank you very much, and uh, not too bad of a night here in the uh, backyard. It's even going to get milder over the next couple of days. We actually have some rain to talk about in our forecast as well. Now we're talking about the milder air. It continues to start to make its way into our area. Here's a look at the national map, and you can see for yourself where the cold air is still remaining out through Bismarck, where it's minus 2, 4 in Great Falls, and 17 in Minneapolis. We have a nice warm-up in store for our area. We'll talk about the seven-day forecast coming up. Hi, I'm Wayne Leupold, the pastor of Christ Lutheran Church in Hazleton, and I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Blessed New Year. 
Edwin in the Pines, located in Drums, provides the perfect scenery in any season to complement your wedding or special event. From the spectacular colors of fall, a cozy winter setting, or the plush greens of summer, Edgewood will provide a breathtaking setting for your exceptional affair. Edgewood is perfect for weddings, birthday celebrations, showers, baptism, or any special event. From small, intimate gatherings to breathtaking formal affairs, your event is certain to be an amazing experience to remember for years to come. Celebrate at Edgewood in the Pines. Heritage SureSave, your neighborhood full-service supermarket. Come see for yourself. They have the freshest selection of meats, cheese, and produce. Baked goods made fresh on premises. They have an in-store butcher who is happy to accommodate your special orders. Be sure to stop in and check out their unadvertised specials. You'll find them throughout the store. See their flyer for weekly specials. Heritage SureSave, your neighborhood full-service supermarket. This week at Heritage, Farmer's Dairy Iced Tea Gallons, only $1.88. Wilkes-Barre. Hey, Wilkes-Barre. On Friday, January 10th, WWE VIP Experience presents WWE Live. See all your favorite superstars up close like never before, including World Heavyweight Champion John Cena, WWE Champion Randy Orton, Intercontinental Champion Big E Langston, WWE Tag Team Champions The Rhodes Brothers, and more. It's WWE Live in Wilkes-Barre, January 10th. Tickets and VIP packages are available. Go to WWE.com for more information. WYLNCA 35's children's programming is designed with the specific purpose of serving the educational and informational needs of children. In compliance with FCC guidelines, a copy of the children's programming report is on file for public inspection at WYLN, 1057 East 10th Street, Hazleton, PA, during normal business hours, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. Making the gift list. I'm shopping for Aunt Rita. Six nieces, four nephews, a cousin in Chicago, Dallas, LA, New York, Paris. I'm running out of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love logistics. Victoria's Candy is giving quality without compromise since 1934. Now at the 22nd Street Plaza with easy access and plenty of parking. Stop in our newest location where you'll find nostalgic candy and old-fashioned hard candies from your fondest memories. Remember, at Victoria's Candies, we do local deliveries and ship our chocolates anywhere in the world. Order now and receive free shipping on our beautiful 3-pound and 5-pound assorted chocolates. This year, give the gift of chocolates only from Victoria's Candies. 51 North Laurel Street, the Laurel Mall, and now the 22nd Street Plaza. Victoria's Candies, a holiday tradition since 1934. Well, we have some much milder air to talk about in our forecast, and with the milder air, we have some rain to talk about as well. Before all is said and done, we're going to be looking at some spring-like temperatures across our region. Right now, though, nothing to talk to you about. Weather-wise, it is fairly quiet across our area. Live 35 Skycast Doppler, nothing showing up across our region as I speak. So definitely was a chilly start to our morning, generally teens and 20s and today actually managing to make it up into the 40s in most locations. Some areas struggling to make it out of the upper 30s, but still not bad for this time of year. Temperature wise across our area, 34 as my shoes squeak from being outside, 34 in Berwick as well as New Angola, 34 in Bloomsburg, 34 also in Monoy City, and 34 degrees in Danville. Here's a look at our satellite and radar, and you'll be able to see that those clouds continue to be on the increase across northeastern and central Pennsylvania, really starting to thicken up as I speak, and they'll continue to thicken up through the overnight hours. But we're going to stay dry through tonight. Now, as we start heading into tomorrow, we have a shot of a little bit of some mud drizzle, a little bit of some light precipitation, not a whole lot, and then some showery type of precipitation, some rain showers come into play as we start going into uh, tomorrow later on in the day and as we go into tomorrow night. And then as we go into our Friday and Saturday, 
some more on and off rain and some rain showers, periods of it. It won't be raining the whole entire time, but we'll have to deal with the rain that will be on and off in nature. And again, it's going to continue to remain above freezing, so we're not going to have to worry about any type of frozen precipitation across our area. Notice tomorrow, boy, it's going to be much milder across our region and going into our Sunday before all is said and done, we're going to be looking at widespread 60s. Uh, some locations will be in the mid to upper 60s. Pretty nice for this time of year. So again, milder air tomorrow is milder today. It'll be milder tomorrow, milder as we head into our Saturday and even into our Sunday. And then as we start going in early next week, that's when we're going to start to see some uh, colder air start to make its way back into our area just in time as we go into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. But at this point, still looking like it should be fairly quiet across our area. And then no big storms to talk about. Uh, anytime soon with the exception of some that rain we'll see Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Again, tonight not looking too bad temperature-wise, and tomorrow up into the 40s. Some locations will be near 50 degrees. Some of that rain will overspread our area. A little bit of some drizzle, some light rain early on, and then uh, some rain showers on and off in nature. That'll stay with us for tomorrow night, as well as Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Here's a look at the extended forecast brought to you by the Wire Guys, a division of Arc Electric. Going into the next uh, few days, here's what we can expect in the 40s and then mid to upper 40s, I think as we go into our Saturday and then 60s going into our Sunday. And then it gets colder for Sunday night, some rain and snow showers around mixed. Monday it'll be dry, much colder for Tuesday, which is Christmas Eve, and then getting up to near freezing as we go into Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Our evening Pennsylvania lottery number is a daily 860, the big four, 1364. Quinto numbers, 44065, and a cash five, 13, 17, 19, 28, and 35. We'll have more late edition coming up after these commercial messages. On the way to retirement, some people realize that work isn't really a bad thing. Some may want to start their own business one day. Our financial advisors will look at your complete financial picture, no matter where your money's invested, to create a plan designed to help you get to and through retirement. When you need a financial advisor fully invested in you, turn to us, Wells Fargo Advisors. Together we'll go far. Choose Sophie Jewelers, specializing in custom diamond engagement rings. Located in the Coal Creek Plaza, Route 61, St. Clair. Attention women who have taken birth control. The commonly prescribed birth control pills Yaz, Yasmin, and Ocella have been linked to serious injuries. If you or a loved one have taken Yaz, Yasmin, or Ocella and suffered deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, blood clots, stroke, heart attack, or your loved one even died, Call the Rely On Group at 800-908-0527. That's 800-908-0527. We build tires, but not tires like anybody else. We build Cooper tires for people, not just cars. For chauffeurs and shuttle pilots, heavy haulers and trophy trout fishermen, which is why we've built our new Discoverer AT3 for all traction, all terrain, all the time performance. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. Grab your passport to four adventures in one spectacular ice show. Disney on Ice presents Passport to Adventure. Trek to the wilds of Africa with Simba, Timon, and Pumbaa. Dive into the magic of Ariel's world under the sea. Soar to Neverland with Tinkerbell, Peter Pan, and Captain Hook. And catch some waves with Lilo and Stitch in Hawaii. It's a round-trip ticket to family fun right in your hometown. Don't miss Northeast Pennsylvania's favorite winter tradition. Playing Mohegan Sun Arena January 15th through 20th. Get your tickets today at Ticketmaster. Hello, I'm Tiffany Cloud. I love books, appreciate the efforts of local authors, respect those who recognize the need to know our history, 
And this week, local author Chris Cannon joins me to talk about his new book, All We Like Sheep, a thought-provoking read and one so timely in light of what's going on in our nation and our communities. This week on The Storm, only on WYLN-TV. I'm sure many of you are aware that Hazleton's hometown boy, Tampa Bay Rays skipper Joe Madden, is back in town. It's time again for his Thanksgiving festivities, and as Ann told you before, the gymnasium at the old MPB school, now known as the Hazleton One Community Center, was packed with adults and kids alike waiting to shake hands with Madden after today's press conference. We got the chance to talk to Joe about how far the Hazleton Integration Project has come in just a year's time. Like I said, I was sitting here listening to everybody talk and I'm trying to take it all in and you could just see the, the dramatic improvement and everything just, just right down to the building itself. Uh, but all the programs that are already in place and are going to be built upon, the volunteers that are already in place will be built upon. Uh, just a word getting out there that the place is here with the, all these services available. It's pretty darn impressive to be going this, this well this quickly. One of the biggest fundraisers for HIP is slated for tomorrow night at Genetti's on Route 309 in Hazel Township. That's Madden sold out celebrity dinner and auction. He once again has an all-star cast coming in from all over the baseball world. A Bo, Larry Bo. Bo has been on board from the beginning and uh, of course uh, the great Philly player and, and uh, major league manager and just he's a good friend of mine. So Bo will be here and then also from Philadelphia will be the Philly Fanatic, uh, which is really going to be very entertaining for everybody. Uh, and of course myself and then Mick Billmeyer, who was the bench coach last year for the uh, Phillies and now is going to be with the Detroit Tigers next year. Uh, then we have Kim Jones from the NFL Network, uh, Kenny Rosenthal. Uh, you all know Kenny, and then of course Eddie Randall is going to be the MC once again, and then El Tiant, uh, my buddy Louis Tiant right behind us. Uh, listen, there, there's a wonderful gentleman right there. He's a great ambassador for the game and for the Hispanic communities from Cuba. I've gotten to know him well as a member of the Boston Red Sox. He's always come over and visited with me. So when this opportunity came up, he said yes, and I really appreciated it. Tiant is from Cuba and was a giant in the league from 1964 to 1982. The righty pitched for the Indians, the Twins, the Red Sox, Pirates, Yankees, and the Angels, and is one of five pitchers to have pitched four or more consecutive shutouts in the 50-year expansion era. He was also known to have the most distinctive wind-up in baseball history. Now he is one of the Boston Red Sox pitching advisors. He was honored. Madden asked him to come to his hometown. Um, that made me feel good about it because I think uh, that's the one thing we should do. Only human, only guy be in the game or, or regular person. We should help you. The other person may help, you know. I mean, you know, yes, we do a lot of complaining about this, complain about that. You know, a lot of people, they in way change, and we are. We're lucky, you know. We had the same good guy every day. We got what we got. We're not hungry. We can support in us kids. You know, a lot of this kid, a lot of this family can do a lot of this. Yeah, you know, you, you have to, you just looking at the picture, and you have to feel good about it, you know, just doing it, because that's what my heart telling me to do. Um, I always believe in short-term goals met, gains, where people, the general public can recognize that. Um, you need to, you need to constantly make uh, gains, and that, that's part of the short-term goal situation. And when people see that, I think more people jump on board. When they see a positive situation pop up, more people jump on board. Uh, they become more understanding of what you're trying to do, and then all of a sudden it becomes really uh, a hot topic and it, catches, it just catches on fire, and that's what we're looking for. The celebrity auction kicks off tomorrow night at 6 p.m. at Genetti's. Organizers said they are expecting over 600 people for the sold-out event. We'll have more coming up with Madden in a few minutes, but first, let's check out some high school scores. First, the Hazleton Area Cougars basketball team. Wheels were up yesterday as they headed south to Florida to participate in a Christmas basketball tournament at Disney World. Today, the boys played in their first game of the trip against Westfield High School from Virginia and came through with a 77-65 win. The Tamaqua boys fell in a heartbreaker against Blue Mountain, 
46 to 44 in overtime. The Blue Devils fell in nativity in boys hoop 65-37. Angelo Muscornik had 14. John Storm had a dozen for Shenandoah. Matt Mambeck dropped 26 points for the Spartans tonight as they took down Panther Valley. The last report we had from the Monoy Area Weather League game in the third quarter, the Bears led 52 to 8. And those MMI preppers off to a hot start this season. They taught Marion 48-34. Ed Herbner and Corey Rogers both had 13 for the Preppers. Mike Verkusky had 15 for the Colts. And Ganley is coming back next with more Late Edition. What do you see? Perhaps you're noticing the rusted fender or the dented side panel. Maybe the first thing your eye goes to is the worn interior. But look closer and you'll see something else. Value. At Harry's You Pull It, we see value in your old car and so will others. It's the reason we offer top dollar for your car. Junker, clunker, piece of tin, your car may have many names, but at Harry's, there's only one that matters. Value. Visit one of our three locations today in Hazleton, Pennsburg, and Allentown. Weatherwood is a privately owned 200-bed nursing and rehabilitation center. Nestled within the quiet town of Weatherly, PA, we offer our residents and their families tranquil and scenic views from just about anywhere in the building. We are located within minutes of Hazleton General Hospital as well as major metropolitan medical and trauma centers in the Lehigh Valley. Whispering Meadows is a 50-bed secured dementia unit within our facility. Whether you need short-term, long-term, or respite stay, call or stop by today for a tour. Enjoy the great outdoors at the Whitetail Preserve Shooting Ranges Trap, Skeet, and Sporting Clays course. No waiting and no lines. First time shooting? Whitetail Preserve employs certified instructors to help you get the most out of your experience. Hungry? The restaurant at Whitetail has a great menu to satisfy and offers catering for all occasions. Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, approximately 13 miles west of Hazleton and just one hour from Allentown, Reading, and the Delaware Water Gap. 118 Boulevard Road, just off the Rockland Road, near Rockland, 384-2314. Carmen's Bakery, located in downtown Hazleton, offers a large selection of Carmen's homemade delectable pastries, cookies, cakes, pies, apple dumplings, and desserts, in addition to specialty breads, rolls, and pizzas. Carmen's Bakery can make the perfect cookie basket or holiday pastry tray featuring home-baked Italian treats and desserts. What better gift to give than a sweet gift from Carmen's Bakery? Carmen's gift cards are also available. And remember to stop at Carmen's Deli for a wholesome hot lunch or take-home dinner for the family. Carmen's Bakery and Deli, downtown Hazleton. Developers have abandoned plans for opening an alcohol and drug rehabilitation center on St. John's Road in Butler Township. Developers Dr. Jude Sideri and John Darrow announced they're exploring alternate sites for the center. The development came just two days after 400 people attended a township zoning hearing about the proposed facility, most of them opposed to it. The zoning board took no action on the case and continued the hearing to look for a larger venue. The developers made clear that while they're no longer looking at opening it at the St. John's Road site, they will continue looking for a suitable location. They stopped short of ruling out an alternative site in the township. With this being the last Hazleton City Council tonight, City Council voted on its 2014 budget. By a vote of 3-2, the City of Hazleton passed its 2014 budget this evening. Council members Gene Mope and Jack Mundy voted no. I don't know of any community in, in, in this area, I mean, maybe the whole entire northeastern Pennsylvania that is lowering taxes. Even Weatherly raised their taxes the first time in eight years, so Hazleton is lowering them, uh, lowering the debt service. Why can't we give that back to the citizens? And I think that's, that's what I'm looking at. And we're saving money in the process. So it's a win-win it's a situation. So it's a matter of when you pay the debt, you pay the debt whenever you can pay the debt. If that happens in August and September, then you pay the debt in August and September. With this being an election year, council will have until February 15th to amend the budget after the new council is sworn in on January 6th. Councilman Jack Mundy says they will be looking at amending this budget. The budget... We have, we have until February 15 to amend it and make some changes, which we are. You know, I, I would propose and like to have a, hi a hiring freeze on the city. We don't want to hire anyone because of the financial shape the city's in. And, I, you know, I have to talk to my other council members, but we don't want to hire, you know, people unless we really have to. At the previous meeting, Council President Jim Perry made a motion to amend the budget by transferring the commercial sewer transmission fee fund balance to sewer bonds, something Jack Mundy says seriously needs to be looked at. What they did was 
at, at the one hand charge people more on a stormwater fee and then at the other end gave them a, a tax break for a year anyway and created a mess for the city and and Steve Hahn admitted that that it could be it could be a problem it could lead to layoffs and it sort of ties the city's hands from what they what they did but I'm of the opinion I've talked to some other people some legal people you need four votes to amend the budget you need a super majority so they when even when they were amending the budget they couldn't amend it so whether it's legal or not we'll find out I think Steve was trying to find a way to save money and not have to borrow the money. Uh, so I, I didn't get the impression that he said it was wrong. I mean, everybody else approves of that. We approved it. I mean, he's trying to find a way not to borrow money from a bank or get a tan. So he wants to take the money, use it for now, re replenish that money with the, with the stormwater fee, and then that can be used to draw down on the taxes. Uh, I don't see why it can't be done. Uh, if they want to amend it and change it, they certainly can. But here's an opportunity for us to save the citizens some money, uh, and not, not borrow any, not use any, uh, not pay any fees to borrow money. So you can use the money and put it back, and then use it again. Again, council has until February 15th to amend the 2014 budget. Two members said goodbye tonight after losing the November election. Come January, Dr. David Sosar and Jeff Cassatt will be sworn in. Council President Jim Perry and Kevin Shatter thank the residents and wished everyone well during their final comments. And, uh, you know, having another meeting, I thought that could, could have been helpful, but, um, you know, their answers to, their answers to the budget coming up in the, in the upcoming years, so I guess we're just going to have to wait for them. I will still be involved in the community, and I thank everybody for that. I will, uh, a lot of great people, and we want to thank the administration and all the workers. Uh, it's been a great experience, and I, uh, I won't go away. The new council will be sworn in on Monday, January 6th at 10 a.m. Major parts of Act 13 were struck down today. That's the gas drilling law. The Supreme Court struck down the clauses which take authority away from local zoning hearing boards and give it to the state. Act 13 declared that municipalities must allow gas drilling in all zoning designations, including residential, as long as certain buffers were adhered to. The Supreme Court struck that portion of the law down by a 4-2 vote this afternoon. That means that local zoning hearing boards can restrict drilling in any way that they see fit. Fire destroyed a local restaurant and drums. Now the owner is picking up the pieces. It was back in 2009 when the Bell House Cafe at 656 North Hunter Highway in Drums held its grand opening. Owner Thomas Bell stands outside his business five years later, just hours after flames gutted his business, reflecting on the memories. Firefighters from all over Luzerne County were called in to the third alarm fire around 5.30 yesterday evening. When the first units arrived on scene, the building was completely engulfed in flames. Tanker trucks were stationed at the Candu Corporate Center, just a mile south of the fire scene. Parts of Route 309 were shut down due to the freezing temperatures and the amount of water on the roadway. It was at least an hour until crews were able to get the fire under control and extinguished. Butler Township remained on scene for several hours. As Bell revisits the site of the cafe today, he says there has been an outpouring of support from the community. I have great customers. I, last night and today alone, uh, I've gotten so many well wishes and uh, I really don't know what to say about it. I'm still pretty much devastated. I would just like to thank all of the customers that have called and wished me well. Thank you. For five years, the Bell House Cafe has been serving customers breakfast and lunch. When we first started, we were 100% green. We had one bag of garbage, but we used uh, corn plates and forks, and uh, it uh, made you feel like you were at a picnic. And uh, now we went to flatware and, and uh, bigger tables, nicer tables. We just put in $12,000 worth the new furniture in there, and uh, as you saw, it's trashed. A state police fire marshal was on scene and is still investigating how the fire began. 
Bell told us today that he does plan on rebuilding the Bell House Cafe, the business that he loved so much. People don't understand, but they said how much it mattered to them. But they really mattered to me. Um, coming in every day, seeing uh, my regulars in the morning, it's family. It's a great place, so I, I have to rebuild it. According to Bell, no one was hurt in the fire, and all of his animals got out safely. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. Beth Mensinger is back with more sports here on Late Edition. But first, we head back outside to Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbachik in the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center. Joe? Well, thank you very much, Ann. I tell you what, with these temperatures getting warmer and the snow melting, it is like perfect uh, snowball weather to uh, make a snowball, maybe make a snowman as well. I actually could have a lot of fun with this. All right, we'll talk what we can expect with the seven-day fork gas cup he wants me to wail it so we'll, no, nothing's out there so we'll just give it a fling no cars hurt in the process so we're completely all safe and no animals harmed either so we're all right <laughs> all right well going back in time 1924 record low temperature for december minus 59 degrees a complete seven day forecast coming up in a few All Care Home Care, the health care that you need in the comfort and privacy of your own home. At All Care Home Care, our caring and compassionate staff of skilled nurses, occupational speech, physical therapists, dietitian, social worker, and home health aides will give you the professional care you need. Call 459-3002. With All Care Home Care, you will feel so much better and be able to do so much more. Remember, it's still your choice. For your care, call us and we'll be there. A winning smile. It's not the secret to success, but it sure helps. Protect your smile by visiting Dr. Weiss for complete dental services. Dr. Weiss offers a full-service denture laboratory on premises, offering dentures in one day. Three dentists, four hygienists, and a team of caring technicians and assistants specializing in quality dentures and repairs, complete general dentistry, extractions, cleaning, and caps. Dr. Weiss, where you can have new dentures in one day. WYLN. Your first choice for locally produced shows like Chef Lou, Gentastic Sweets, Off the Beaten Path, The Storm, and more. Find out how you can stretch your advertising dollars and be a part of the WYLN TV lineup. Call 570-459-1869, extension 1302. WYLN, we're your local network. Everyone knows Dan here at Heritage Hill. He's been devoted to our family of residents for over a decade. Experienced, nurturing, exceptional. It's what our care team is all about. Our residents enjoy personal care, homemade meals, sea trips, clubs, and social activities. Shepherd's Garden, our memory care neighborhood, ensures a compassionate and secure environment. Come meet us. We're honored to share our hearts, our home, our heritage of caring. Heritage Hill Senior Community in Weatherly. Call today for your free personal tour. Welcome to Robert Stevens Face and Body, Hazleton's Complete Skin Care Center. Here, our licensed specialist will consult with you to discuss your skin care needs, rejuvenate you with our special facial treatments, and apply gentle, relaxing massages to melt your tension away using all state-of-the-art technical treatments and superior skin products. So call today and let the transformation begin at Robert Stevens Face and Body, 788-7546. Things move a little slower here in DSLville. Slow pitch softball is big here. Really big. There's not a fast food restaurant in town. Zero. Get the most out of the internet. Get Service Electric High Speed Internet. Call Service Electric today to sign up. Ho, 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 ho. Slow down. Tourists.
Winter meetings for Major League Baseball concluded recently, and it's been a busy offseason with trades and free agent signings. We asked Tampa Bay Rays manager Joe Madden how the meetings went, and also if he's worried that his Cy Young award-winning pitcher and David Price will still be in a Rays uniform next season. Great. It's like one big fraternity party. I got to meet a lot of buddies. Um, we got a trade done prior to the meetings. We're still working on a couple different things. I know David Price is a, a, the big issue right there, and I honestly don't know. He could be back with us next year or can, he can be moved, uh, but he's one of my favorite people in all of baseball. So Joe was pretty tight-lipped there about what was going on with Price, who had a 3.33 ERA in 27 games last season and threw for 10 wins. Most recently, the Rays did sign third baseman James Loney Friday with a three-year $21 million deal. Loney hit 299 with 13 homers and 75 RBIs last year. Only after coming back to the floor for a few games, Kobe Bryant is out again with another injury. The 35-year-old who was bouncing back from tearing his Achilles earlier this year now is expected to miss six weeks with a fracture in his left knee. The injury happened on Tuesday night, but he just got an MRI on it today. Kobe recently signed a two-year, $48.5 million contract extension with the Lakers. And a source in the NFL is reporting that former Bears head coach Lovey Smith was interviewed by the Houston Texans earlier this week. Houston recently fired head coach Gary Kubiak due to their terrible record, and Wade Phillips holds the reins as the interim coach. Word is he may be a candidate also for the head coaching spot. Smith, on the other hand, posted an 81-63 and record in nine seasons with the Bears, who he also led to three NFC North and a North, North uh, championships and a berth in Super Bowl 41. Unfortunately, no NFL tonight. It was the last Thursday night football game last week, so we're skipping right to the NHL. The Flyers were down three zips to the Blue Jackets, but roared back to win it 5-4 after a crazy Clajeru goal. The Penguins win over Minnesota, and it's Buffalo winning 4-2 against the Bruins. In a shootout, Toronto one-ups Phoenix. Florida wins over Ottawa, and in overtime, the Flames fell to Detroit 3-2. Tampa Bay, they won by two goals. The Blues are up 5-1 in the third period. Dallas is leading by three goals over Vancouver. In the second, Edmonton one goal to the Avs zero, and it is scoreless in Los Angeles. Two games in the NBA, the final in Oklahoma City, Thunder 107. Bulls 95 and the Warriors are hosting the Spurs tonight. That one is just getting underway. We also have that quick final in the Monoy area and Weatherly Skooka League boys basketball game. The Bears win 59 to 26. Stick around. Joe Garbacic, I hope, is coming back after the break. I don't know what's going on over there. Hello, my name's Mary Beth Elias from Klein Township Police Department. We'd like to wish everyone a happy and safe holiday. The Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home Incorporated at 542 North Wyoming Street in Hazleton, serving the greater Hazleton area since 1890 and still family owned and operated, offers convenient parking, handicapped accessibility, seating for over 150 people, casket, cremation, product showrooms to accommodate traditional cremation and pre-planned funerals. The Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home Incorporated, 570-454-3341. Edgewood in the Pines, located in Drums, provides the perfect scenery in any season to complement your wedding or special event. From the spectacular colors of fall, a cozy winter setting, or the plush greens of summer, Edgewood will provide a breathtaking setting for your exceptional affair. Edgewood is perfect for weddings, birthday celebrations, showers, baptism, or any special event. From small intimate gatherings to breathtaking formal affairs, your event is certain to be an amazing experience to remember for years to come. Celebrate at Edgewood in the Pines. Your family's good health begins with a great team. That team is the Alliance Medical Group. We're the first health care provider in the greater Hazleton area to offer a fully integrated approach to family and specialized medical care. Our expanding network of more than 30 physicians and specialists are trusted by thousands for routine and complex medical treatments. For a convenient appointment at any of our 15 regional offices, simply call 501-4-AMG. Alliance Medical Group. Your health. That's our specialty. During these changing times, is your insurance program up to date? I'm local Allstate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. 
our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? Attention mothers and fathers of children with birth defects. The antidepressant drug Zoloft has been linked to heart, brain, and spine damage and many other horrible birth defects in newborns. I'm attorney Bob Goldwater. If this has happened to you or a loved one, call us right now. You may be entitled to financial compensation. If you took Zoloft while you were pregnant and your child was born with a birth defect, call 1-800-861-2678. That's 1-800-861-2678. Watch Wellness Through Physical Therapy with Ting O of Hazleton Physical Therapy and let Ting and his talented team guide you on your journey to wellness, only on WILN. WILN. Your first choice for locally produced shows like Chef Lou, Gentastic Sweets, Off the Beaten Path, The Storm, and more. Find out how you can stretch your advertising dollars and be a part of the WYLN TV lineup. Call 570 459 1869, extension 1302. WYLN, we're your local network. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Well, we got the mild weather to talk about. We can crank up the heat, so to speak, because temperatures like this for almost the ending part of December, right before Christmas Eve practically, that's pretty nice heading into our Sunday. There's going to be widespread records that will either be tied or broken across the northeast down toward the southwest and very impressive numbers. Temperatures well above where we should be for this time of year. But Sunday will be the last of the mild weather. It will be the mildest over the next several days because then come Monday and as we go into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, it's going to get much colder across our area. Nothing to show you on our live 35 Skycast Doppler. It is dry. 34 Wilkes-Barre Scranton International Airport, 37 in Mount Pocono at the freezing point in Allentown, 28 in Williamsport, as well as a Sealands Grove up in the Wyoming Valley area, Nanticoke to Wilkes-Barre, Kingston, and Pittston. Temperatures slightly above freezing as we approach the 11 o'clock hour. Skycast precipitation and clouds. Clouds continue to be on the increase as we go into tonight and tomorrow. Maybe some drizzle across our area. And then we'll have on and off rain, some showery type of precipitation. Later tomorrow as we go on our Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, also going to be some areas of fog out there. But temperatures will continue to remain above freezing. It won't be until Monday that we get some colder air coming in. And then we'll have to deal with some rain and snow showers mixed across northeastern and central Pennsylvania. But the milder weather continues to infiltrate across our area tomorrow. And boy, I tell you what, when I showed you those numbers for Sunday, some places getting close to almost 70 degrees, especially in some of the larger cities and some lower 70s out there, that's pretty nice. You don't get better temperatures than that, especially for this time of year. But it's all going to come to an end just in time for Christmas Eve and day. With that colder air coming in, the dip in the jet stream changes our weather pattern once again. And that, of course, is going to bring in the much colder air across our area. So keep those shorts away. Keep the tank tops away. Don't bring them out and don't start bringing out the flip-flops. I know some people will try to on Sunday because it's going to... Keep in mind, this is all relative. It's just because it's 50s and 60s, it may feel like it's 80s and 90s for this time of year because we've been used to 20s and teens and 30s. I'm telling you, don't do it. It's flu season. Dress like you should for winter, although you don't have to wear all those layers. Chances of a white Christmas, 
well, pretty much they continue to diminish because of those mild weather conditions we'll be having, as well as the rain that will be on and off. So it's going to be very tough to hold on to just a little bit of snow for Christmas Eve because I think just about all of it's going to be washed away or melted by then. Unfortunate, most likely at this point, chances of it being a white Christmas are diminishing very quickly as I speak. So there you go, seven-day forecast and uh, getting colder for Sunday night into Monday. I mean, the best chance would be maybe if you get some rain and snow showers and some snow showers for Sunday night that can whiten up the ground for Monday, but still getting above freezing, that would even have a good shot of melting. But at least it gets a little bit colder and feeling a little bit more like Christmas across our area. So well, you're not going to get the tank tops out and shorts. Well, and I'm not going to wear my flip-flops. I might. I might wear my flip-flops just, just <laughs> I for rock the flip just to get me until mad. the very last minute. Oh, okay. And then it goes right to, like, the furry boots, so. Yeah, there's no in-between. Mm -hmm. I know either for either one of us, there's no in-between, so. Maybe just for spite. I might just break them out. Just for, we'll see. <laughs> Don't complain if you get sick. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Tomorrow, Beth, you will be at Joe Madden's Celebrity Auction, so yeah. you'll have all the details on that. Pretty Lots exciting fun. event. Free, uh, there's some dinner up there. There's uh, free events that are also happening this weekend. Plenty of time. We will see you tomorrow.